Good morning, good evening and good afternoon YouTube. Welcome to Šibenik, Croatia. We are going to talk today about life in Croatia as a digital nomad or moving to Croatia to be a digital nomad. And before we start, I need to take James, one of your subscribers, who pointed me in the direction of this video. So, all of you considering that lifestyle, this is why Croatia should at least be on one of the options on your list for, for your home away from home. Now, Croatia offers residence to digital nomads who come live to Croatia. It's, it's called a digital nomad visa. Now, two important things to know about that. If you are from any of the EU countries, you are not legible. I think that's the word. Anything, it's not available to you in that case. It's also not a visa, even though it's called a, a visa. It's more of a residence permit. The difference is, I won't go into much details, details, but with a visa, like a tourist visa, if you're coming to Croatia, some countries need them, you will only be able to stay for 30 days. This allows you to stay to up to 12 months, and then after those 12 months, you can, of course, ask for a renewal. In the description of the video, I'll put a link to a website called Expat Croatia, and you can, you can find much more information there, of course. Everything, not everything, but most of the stuff I'll talk about in this video, I found there. So, yeah, let's go and find some shade for us because it is so hot here. I am like sweating like hell. Sorry if I'm grossing you out. 34 degrees and it's, it's noon. So, <laughs> yeah, let's find some shade and then we're gonna talk about some stuff you actually really need to know before you decide to live in Croatia. This is much better. Now, let's talk about the negatives first. Croatia is one giant gray area. In terms of giving permits to foreigners, the legislation is changing all the time. And in fact, most of it hasn't even been written yet. The desire for foreigners to come to Croatia is still mostly a new thing, which is also why... Do I have a B on my... <laughs> Anyways, uh, people in Croatia are still shocked that someone will, would come and live here, especially because so many Croatians left in the last, I don't know, let's say five or six years. It's estimated that 200,000 Croatians left. So yeah, someone wanted to come and live here is a very new thing. This can be good and bad depending on the situation because everyone's situation is different, of course. But there's cases where people will come to apply for their third residence permit or digital nomad visa and police literally wouldn't know what to do because it's not covered in, in the law and they never had a case like that that someone came there for the third time so they, they didn't know what to do. As I said, Croatia is one giant gray area. Let's get something to eat and walk a little bit. But yeah, reason number two, well not reason but my next point I guess, is don't expect the government in Croatia to welcome you with open arms. I need to cross the road here without getting killed. Yeah, they will not. Uh, despite the mass exodus of Croatian people, the country still hasn't caught up to the idea that letting foreigners in might help with, with such loss of the taxpayers that they got, have, what the English word, yeah, you get my point. And if you're wondering why you can't get a straight answer from a consulate or an embassy or anything like that, it's because they're basically the first line of def defense here against the immigration. And the ridiculous thing is they actually go under a different ministry than the one that handles immigration. It's ridiculous. I guess what I'm saying is don't bother with them. It's for anything to, to be successful, you need to be in Croatia to, to start a process anyways. It's also not uncommon to encounter someone over, I don't know, at the police or some, someone you need to talk to to get a permit or anything, who is just in a bad mood and their ego will not allow them to help you. They will basically make your life miserable if, if they, they feel like it. It's just like that. I don't know what else to tell you. People can be idiots. I'll give you an example. A guy in Split, Croatia, went to the police station to, to ask for his renewal for the second time. So he was already here two years. For those two years, every time he needed something, there was a specific lady in the station who dealt with him, which didn't speak uh, English. So every time he went to the station to get any kind of papers or whatever he needed, he brought some Croatian with him to help him. 
And then imagine his surprise when he went there after two years and she spoke perfect English. She just didn't feel like helping him for the first two years because God knows why. She was probably employed there by her political party and she hates her job and that is how she, I don't know, projected her unhappiness or whatever the fuck it was. But yeah, that's what people do when people are morons in Croatia. So after everything I just said, you might wondering, well, why the hell would I move here then? Well, why not? It is centrally located and well connected to other European cities. It has fast internet. It has very relaxed lifestyle I, I explained in a video two weeks ago. It has high quality health care, especially if you live in Zagreb. It has friendly people and great hospitality with English being very, very widely spoken. Wonderful nature and short distance travel between different landscapes, which I also talked in a video two weeks ago. It has lower cost of living than most of EU countries and it is one of the most safest countries not just in Europe but in the world. To change the subject just a little bit, the city I was walking around while filming all of this is called Šibenik as I mentioned in the beginning of the video and there are some very very interesting facts about this city which I think you will find very amusing. First of them, Šibenik is the first city in the world to have electric powered street lamps. World's second oldest hydroelectric power plant was built in Šibenik in 1894 and uh, the construction of it lasted over a year. It powered over 340 street lights in Šibenik. It is one of only five cities in the world with two UNESCO heritage sites, St. Nicholas Fortress and St. James Cathedral. For that reason, it is on a bucket list for many architecture lovers all over the world among, among London, Berlin, Beijing and New Delhi. If you like this video, you might like other videos we make. We make few of them per week, sometimes one, depending on how much time we have. So please consider clicking that subscribe button and please consider clicking the Patreon link in the description of the video. There's bonus content there, videos released before they are released on YouTube. We have monthly lives with our Patreons all the good stuff and it would mean a lot to us since we are planning on being a full-time youtubers one day we're not escaping that so yeah back to the video now construction of cathedral lasted 105 years and is built entirely out of a stone it is the only one of that kind in whole europe Sibenik is also the oldest native Croatian city on the Adriatic coast. It is famous for Faust Vrančić, that's a guy who invented parachute. So basically parachute was invented in Sibenik. Basketball player Dražen Petrović was born in Sibenik and if you watch Game of Thrones, city of Bravos was in fact Sibenik. It was filmed there. Now comment section, what do you think about living in Croatia and about Sibenik? Come on, I want to know everything. If you love this video, press the like button. If you didn't, press the dislike one. If you loved it, press the subscribe button. Check our Patreon and I'll see you next week.